Gladiator devastated by high water. Or was it? Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Pretty good here. And that's right. Was my Jeep Gladiator devastated by high water? I know, dramatic, right? But it was a dramatic experience. Uh, if you didn't see my video, you know, the other day I had a dentist appointment uh, that I went to. And during that dentist appointment, a huge drenching thunderstorm uh, began. And I say began because it lasted for hours just poured and poured. And when I left that appointment, uh, it was still pouring, storming, lightning, you name it, it was happening, wind. So there was a lot of water accumulated in the area, like giant little lakes that suddenly formed that I had to drive through, right? And I was in a hurry because I didn't really wanna be in the storm. So I took a lot of those puddles uh, at a pretty uh, high speed, much faster than I should. And I don't recommend that. You know, there's no benefit to trying to hurry through puddles or little rivers that form during storms because if it happens to waterlog your engine, you're going to be stuck on the side of the road. Better to just take it slow and easy and get where you're needing to go. So there were a couple of them particularly deep that I went through, right? And I was going probably at least 30, 35 mile an hour, man. I hit those, water plowed over the front of the Jeep, and for about three, two or three seconds or so, I couldn't even see. That's how much water there was pouring over the front of my Jeep. So I got to thinking, you know, there have been a lot of people out there, a few people, maybe a couple, that have commented on forums and stuff about having major problems with their gladiators during off-road excursions, right? Particularly going through deep mud, which of course is wet, and even water. Now, I believe that Jeep says that you can go through, I think it's about 30 inches of water, something like that, if I recall. Uh, but that's not going through it at high speed, right? That's just kind of crawling through so that you're not throwing water all over the truck. I couldn't imagine trying to shoot across 30 inches uh, in depth of water, right? You'd be in trouble. So I thought we'd take a look. I've got the hood popped there, as you can see, because I'm curious, and this is the first I've looked, as to what going through that water actually did under the hood of my Gladiator. So let's take a look in there. Um, just seeing it first, and I haven't cleaned anything, so any dust or dirt or whatever that you might see, is gonna be the same as what it was right after I went through all that water, right? So the first place that I'm gonna start is where I can see stuff. And that's right over the battery cover here. You can see there's stuff laying on here that obviously if water had gone over, would have washed some of this real light stuff off. Back here on the fuse panel cover, uh, it's dusty. You can see right there, right? Very dusty. Uh, it would have cleaned that off a little bit, if you will, or at least left little lines of water or something if water had gotten in that area. I'm happy to say it doesn't look like anything got in there. On the engine cover, uh, which by the way, there happens to be a strangely conveniently located die cast model of my truck. I, I don't know how that got there, but anyway, you can pick those up down below. Um, you can see here, it's a little bit dusty up here too. Um, obviously water didn't pour all over that or it too would have been cleaned off a bit. And then over here, same thing on the other side. So no indication that any water got in that area. Now, more concerning for me, of course, two areas really. One is the cold air intake. You'll notice over here on the side, we have a nice big opening, right? So that the, the truck can breathe. It sucks air in through this opening. And if it can suck air in, obviously it can suck water in. My concern, and when the water was going up over the Jeep, down here in the fenders, all across the front, through the lights, in the grill, you name it, was that maybe it would have sucked some water in through the cold air intake. Now, I'm looking and the filter is not wet. You can tell that by looking at it. And then down there at the bottom, if you can see, there's no water standing in there. 
And that would be a, a good indication. This just happened, I think, yesterday or day before. There would be water standing down in there if indeed this unit would have sucked water in. I don't see anything in there, so I'm pretty darn happy about that. I think overall, the Jeep did good. You know, I put it through its paces in that little run, and I don't see any indication of anything inside, under the hood. That is awesome. Even up here on the hood liner, this would be wet. It's just like a, it's kind of like a plastic cloth material. And if at worst you would see lines of water or streaks or something up there had that gotten wet. I don't see any indication of anything like that anywhere. Very happy about that. Now, the other area that I was concerned with was back here behind the grill and, or the bumper, I should say. Probably easier to see over here. And that is the wiring. You can see on mine, the wiring is right back here and it is exposed. Now, I don't see any issues there either. I did test the lights, everything works, so no problems there. But here's an example. It did push out my little uh, plug I've put in here. Fortunately, and I did make a video about this, I did put a little holder back behind it. You can kind of see that silver piece. It's kind of a cotter pin to hold this thing in there from falling out. And apparently it worked because it's ready to fall out, but it can't. So now I can just push it back in and seat it like so. Actually, probably need to do something more now because I notice it's no longer being held in there by friction, if you will. But we'll leave it for now. We'll see, maybe it'll expand a little bit in the heat. Let's check the one on the other side. I'm curious to see if the water forced that one out too. Uh, and it did not. This one is still seated in there properly. No issues. I might go ahead and put just a little dab of uh, glue or something on there um, just to make sure that they don't come out. Again, with the little pins I put in there, they shouldn't. Just a little thing to kind of protect them from falling out because they're not really meant to be there, but it just so happened that they fit in really well. Wiring over here is the same. You can see behind there is some wiring exposed back there. Not as much as the other side though. I think it's pretty well protected, uh, but still out in the elements. So overall, uh, I think it did well. I don't see any evidence of uh, any water standing in there or any problems like that. I think everything is golden and it did survive. So I don't know, these people that post and say that they were out and drove through a mud hole or something, they must have driven through 10 feet of mud. I don't know, because if it was anything like the conditions I was in, there's no way that going through something like that is gonna ruin your Jeep. Somebody even talked about having some kind of damage to a drive shaft or something. I can't imagine, they must have done something else, either slammed that drive shaft on a, rat, a rock or a, a stump or a rut, I don't know. But there's no way that just driving around in normal water is going to cause some kind of a massive problem with the Jeep Gladiator. So I don't think my Jeep Gladiator was devastated by high water. I think it handled it perfectly. Anyway, leave a comment. Let me know if you've ever had any problems like that. If you've driven through deep water, maybe even stalled it out because you waterlogged your engine. I'd be curious to know. Also, real quick, I do have an additional channel. It is Rob Motive, all about my 2020 Toyota Tacoma. Check it out, and if you like it, why not subscribe? Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And do me a favor, smash that subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.